Hello there, Boots on here. My neighbors offered me this machine. It's an Einhell electric lawnmower. For obvious reasons, I think they gave it to me or offered it to me. The cable looks like it got a couple of licks. Uh, this is a thing that happens to a lot of these lawnmowers, you know, of every kind of electric kind. If you're not paying attention, you drive over them and you give them a lick. If you've got a residual current device in your house or if you're using a special plug with a residual current device, there's really no issue at all other than it interferes with your progress. There's about a meter of cable on this and you could just put a connector on here you can buy plugs and sockets and things to join them up in the electrical shop or in the big hardware supermarkets you put a plug on the end of the appliance and a socket on the end of the cable and it's basically just put making an extension cable with a short flex on the machine but i'm gonna have a look and see if i can deal with it up at the handle end underneath here there's a couple of torque screws and uh, we'll get into that and see what we can do so if i flip the machine over i've got a bucket there to catch the screws a torx screwdriver bit bit bigger than that this is all rusty so clearly it's been left out in the rain these switches can be tricky because they can do this thing where they kind of explode on you when you open them up because there's a spring normally and that's the way it is so we'll open it up and see what's in there and uh sometimes people watch these videos and they think i'm going too slow <laughs> and that may be but uh you could use an electric screwdriver if you wanted to go quicker the reality is that if you're watching this video you'll probably spend longer watching it than you will actually doing the job it takes longer to make a video than it does to fix one of these things but you might learn something and you might think to yourself this is beyond my competence and that's okay too but if you can wire a plug you should be able to do this so let's get this last screw out and pray that it doesn't explode because i'm on the lawn flip this back over put the screws in the bucket try wriggling it no it's not doing it okay something's coming apart there now i'm just wiggling it in my hand I don't know what's going on. Might have plastic lugs joining it into this thing here. Might be what's stopping it. Yeah, it feels like there's something going through the handle there. Yeah, there is some kind of plastic pins or something that'll be apparent in a second. So all of these machines will be slightly different. There's the springs going off, right? All of these machines will be slightly different. I think that just sits on there. Somehow. Yeah, it prevents you pulling in the handle, I think. So it just sits there somehow. We'll figure that out later. And looking at this, we've just got to get this flex in here somewhere. Presumably to these two screws here. And we should be away. So let's get a Phillips screwdriver. There's always a possibility that this would be easier to do up on the bench in your shed or wherever around the kitchen table. I'm doing it over the lawn because it gives this feel for the video of something nice. So let's take that out, twist, twist that around. That'll come up a bit. Come on, there we go. Take that out and put this screw back in here just to keep it safe for now. So this, all this is is a switch. When you push that together, it joins up live and neutral i presume it's double pole and so if i pull that out pull that around then give that a twist it, they're kind of painted shut but that's no biggie so we need to prepare the other end of our cable like this so first things first slide this on because we're going to need that in a moment then get this and strip the cable back bare. I've gone back to where it's not gashed because there's a couple of gashes in it. Pull that off like that. Then using the old cable as a guide, set the length of the new cuts. So to cut them off about here. So the wire cutters on a pliers would do this, but a scissors would equally would equally do it. This thing is a wire strippers. You could just use a pen knife or a standing knife like I did before. That makes the job a little bit quicker if you're doing lots of them and uh, saves the fingers. It has this nice action where you pull the handle, it cl clamps the wire, then it grips it and cuts it, and then it pulls it apart and it releases this side first and then that side and then snaps back together. Oakley dokely. 
twisty twist, twisty twist. I wasn't paying attention to which color went where, but I have a feeling they match up. So, if that one would go in there, and tighten this up. What I should have done before I even did this was taken the old cable and just plugged it straight into the wall to see if the machine worked, because I don't know if it does or not. But uh, it doesn't really matter from the point of view of this video, because this is how you fix the broken cable. Push that in there, just mash it up. As long as it gets a tight grip, let's tighten that up. And then we have to figure out how to get it all back together again. All right, let's put that there. That was underneath somehow. Like that, I'm guessing. Yeah, that's what I would say. In fact, I would say it was on the other side, really. Because there's a, there's a piece of plastic along the bottom there, so it shouldn't, that'll interfere with it otherwise. Get it back in there, push this protector back up. Snap it in there, offer it in there, whatever you call it. Take out that screw again. A restrainer in there and obviously my cable is now a meter shorter and you have to decide if that's all right for you it depends on where you've broken the thing if you've broken it up at this end then this is how you'd fix it and if not if you wanted to get a whole new cable this is also how you'd fix it let's tighten that right down to figure out how to get this back together now let's put that like that and it would have been like that okay so this handle went in here first of all and there's a spring there that's no good so that must engage somewhere like this, like that. See that little, little spring tab there in the back? It slots in here in this case, but could be anywhere really on these things. And this goes like that. So take that off, put the spring on the center, push that on there, and it stops it turning until that's properly down, I guess. Then hold this, <laughs> so, so complicated, hey? Okay. Hold that like that, try and snap it all together at the same time. You do, push that in first, bring it in from the rear. That might be it. Flip it over, and get these screws back in. I guess you could be in a position where you keep chopping through the cable and then you keep <laughs> getting shorter and shorter. Yeah, so look, when you pull it like this, it doesn't switch. When you press that button, it makes the switch noise. Let's plug it in and see what happens. When I was untangling the cable, I found another big chunk taken out of it. So maybe that doesn't work, let's see. So there you go, that's how you do it on pretty much any machine. You've got to get in there and put it back together and try and figure out, you know, remembering. So the, the, the most essential bit is not to let it all fall asunder. It's an interesting mechanism, this. You can turn it on, but it doesn't. Sometimes these are just a lock that stops you pulling the handle. In this case, this is a, like an interface somehow between the handle and the switch, so. It's pretty cool. What's great is that we fixed something and that's the most important bit. Any questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks for watching. See you later.